In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Egypt lies in ruins. The river, blood. The cattle, dead. The people, sick, covered in boils. The crops, dead, destroyed by fiery hail. What was left, devoured by locusts. And darkness, deep darkness, lying over the land. And yet with all that, only the land of Goshen, where Israel dwelt, where God's people were, only there was their light. Only there were the animals alive, were the people well. Once again, the Lord plans to make another distinction between His people and the people of Egypt. Once more, one more plague, a plague this time so severe, so final, as to make all the rest, as destructive as they were, seem child's play. Four hundred years his people were slaves in Egypt. Four hundred years did the Egyptians press them down. Did the Egyptians spill their blood? Four hundred years. And God says to Pharaoh, this people, Israel, is my firstborn. Let them go. Well, now Egypt will learn they will learn at what price they oppressed and captured the firstborn of the Lord. Dear saints, all of these things that are written are written not just for some people of Israel long ago. Moses didn't just write it to remind those of the next generation or the generation after. St. Paul tells us what was written long ago was written for you, that you might see Christ in the Scriptures and that seeing Him you might indeed have hope. Why was he so specific about the land? Why was he so specific about the ritual, about the process, each little piece of it, exactly the way the Lord established it? All of this was but a shadow. All of it was but an image of the true land, the true Passover, the true redemption, the true salvation. All of it was a picture of Christ. And so every piece of it had to correspond exactly to the reality. And so the people were to take a lamb. Before it was to be killed, they were to designate it, to choose it out of the flock. And indeed, out of the flock that followed John the Baptist, there was a man, Jesus of Nazareth, who on one day, even at the Jordan, John pointed him out. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And indeed, they had to take a lamb that was without blemish, and what lamb was more unblemished than the Lamb of God, Christ our Lord, who knew all that it was to be a man except without sin? A male, a year old, not the newborn lamb. In the prime of his strength, he had to be slaughtered. And indeed, they were to keep the lamb until the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. The lamb had to be slaughtered, killed. And by the blood of that lamb, they were to be safe, protected, set apart from all of the people of Egypt, all of those outside the doors, all of those facing death and facing the wrath of God. So they had to take some of the blood put it up on the doorpost and the lintel of the houses. And this blood was to be a sign to the destroyer as he passed by, a sign by which he would see not the blood of some lamb, but see the very sign of the lamb, and thus be turned away. Thus remember mercy. Thus remember not to destroy God's people along with the wicked. And all that night, all that long night, they had to stay within that home, within that seal of the blood, eating the Lord's Passover, eating the flesh of the Lamb. Dear saints, there was a Passover, which our Lord celebrated with His disciples. And even as the Egyptians, as the Israelites captive in Egypt, ate the Passover that night before the great exodus, so the night before the great exodus and the great redemption out of death and sin, 
the Lord ate the Passover with his disciples. And even as Moses gave them the flesh of the Passover lamb to eat together to be a part of that covenant household by household, so the Lord gave to his own disciples the flesh of the lamb, that they might eat it and be a part of the covenant. He gave them the blood, that the blood might mark the door of their lips, might even mark their own hearts, and that this blood would mark their hearts not just for one night, but spare them from sin and death and wrath eternally, forever. And then, yes, the lamb had to die. And so he went out, and he was led indeed like a lamb to the slaughter. And indeed he was slaughtered. The firstborn son struck down to spare the children of God, those adopted through him, those made children after his image. Pharaoh had to learn. He had to finally be brought to admit that this people whom he had captured was indeed the Lord's firstborn son. He had to see what it meant for a father to fight to free his son. And so that night, in the middle of the darkness, in the silence of that night, the all-powerful word, Christ himself, the Son of God, the Word of God leapt down from his royal throne. That very angel of the Lord who had spoke to Moses in the burning bush leapt down from his throne, came down into that doomed land of Egypt, a mighty warrior carrying the sharp sword of God's decree. And he filled each house with death. But wherever the Lord saw the sign upon the door, saw the blood of the Lamb, there indeed he remembered mercy. Until finally, in the midst of that night, the Egyptians awoke. Now the Egyptians went to sleep, the Israelites went to sleep, all the same. But even as it will be on the last day, dear saints, those marked by the blood of the Lamb will rise to freedom. Those outside will rise to suffering, will rise to fear. And so Pharaoh arose that night and found disaster, found Egypt laid low, found the greatest of their strength, the firstborn, the best of them, slaughtered in the night, and cried out, Get out of here. Leave us. We want nothing more to do with you. Dear saints, when that evil tyrant, that true Pharaoh, the devil, saw the firstborn slaughtered upon the cross, there was the devil's own firstborn, sin laid low in the dust and put to death for you. And just as Pharaoh had to finally admit, had to realize no one but a true father would so take up arms and fight for his son with such force, so now the devil must admit, all of you marked with the blood of the lamb, all of you who have received of his flesh, all of you who have tasted of his blood, all of you who have eaten the Passover lamb, the firstborn, slaughtered for you upon the cross, now the devil finally has to admit, you are sons of the Lord. Get out of here. I want nothing more to do with you. Get away from me. For who but a true father would give such a price to save you? Dear saints, through the death of the firstborn, you are now the Lord's own sons. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.